everybody. This is House of Prayer Evangelistic Church, where our pastor is Bernard Crawford Jr. and I am Evangelist Trina Crawford. This morning, I want to welcome you to our Sunday School Hour. Our teacher for this morning will be Brother Cliff Hawkins, Minister Cliff Haw Hawkins, and he is going to come and expound on our, our Sunday School lesson for the month and just welcome us in and tell us what this lesson is going to be about throughout the course of this month of May. And we pray that you'll be able to join in with us at 9 o'clock each Sunday so that you can be empowered and enlightened in the Word of God. Brother Cliff. Amen. Thank you, my sister. What a great opportunity. What a great opportunity to be in the presence of God's people. Yeah. What a great opportunity to be in the presence of God's people, and I'm so thankful to be here this morning. And I am excited about the, the, the new lesson that we're starting today. Um, well, before we get started, I just want to pray. Father God, we just come right now in Jesus' name just thanking you for your amazing grace and thanking you for loving us and keeping us even in these, these current situations, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for providing for everything that we stand in need of. And most importantly, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and we thank you for your word. And we come this morning just asking you to open up our hearts and minds so that as we look at your word that we, we will be illuminated and that we will see things in your word that maybe we haven't even seen before, Lord. Help us to understand what our gifts are and then help us to walk in humble obedience to you as we fulfill those things in our lives. We thank you for all that are here. We thank you for those that are listening or watching uh, throughout the country or this, this city. And Lord, we pray that you will bless everyone as you see fit. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, yeah. Well, we know that those of you that have been with us, we know that we're coming from a, a set of lessons called SEED, which stands for Spiritual Elements Essential for Discipleship. And we're in Series 4. And this is Lesson 2 in Series 4. And Series 4 deals with discipleship and spiritual gifts. Again, uh, this series this, it deals with discipleship and spiritual gifts. And the lesson today, or the lesson for the month of May, we'll be dealing with lesson, Session 2. And the title of it is, What's My Gift? Uh, spiritual Gift Inventory. And, you know, that's... Honestly, when I thought about that, it's almost a dangerous topic to me from the standpoint that if we just look at it from a list and then check it off like that, then we miss a lot of what God is talking about to us. And so this morning, one of the things that we're going to be talking about, we have four words to know. And the first word to know is gifts. And a gift stands for spiritual or natural qualities and abilities that are acquired without compensation. And I'm going to say that again. It says uh, spiritual or natural qualities or abilities that are acquired without compensation. And that Greek word in, uh, is, is charisma. And it's a gift of grace. Okay? And, 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 and I, I point that out because as we look at this and as we start to understand and, 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 and recognize uh, the expression of God in our lives, uh, which really is what gifts are. Um, if, if we have a, a great understanding of who gives the gift, uh, what's the purpose in his giving, and then how to walk in it in humility, then all that around us will be greatly blessed. So uh, again, it's charisma and it's the gift of, 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 of grace, a free gift. And, and, and the second word, even from the author, is grace. And it says it's the unmerited favor of God bestowed on, um, on converted sinners to fit for God's purpose. Uh, and that's big. When you, when you just hear how he even breaks that down, he says it's unmerited favor of God bestowed on converted sinners to fit for God's purpose. And again, it's, it's, it, it, it's a mindset thing. And, and I think that we, we don't want to be there. When, even when you look at scripture, there's a danger in not respecting the gifts of God. Uh, I was reminded, and I was trying to find it, and I couldn't at this moment, but I was reminded in Acts when uh, Simon uh, bar Jonas, uh, bar, uh, bar Jesus, had wanted to buy the gift of healing from Peter. Okay? And uh, it cost him. 
Uh, and even though he had the, the scriptures that he had believed, he even in his belief something was missing in his understanding because he, instead of pursuing or, or, or walking in obedience with God, he sought to go back to the old way to acquire something for his own gain, right? And one thing about the gifts of God, the Bible tells us, and we're going to look at that, is their, 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 their manifestation is for the benefit of all. You know, God does things with us, converted sinners, <laughs> in order to bless and, and, and help to lead other people to a greater understanding of his character, his being, and his love for us. So uh, again, we want to talk about gift, grace, and then uh, which really just outpours right from what we were just talking about. The next word to know was ministry. <laughs> when God gives us, or when God gives us uh, his empowerment, uh, and, and, and one of the things that's different between gifts and natural talents is the fact that it's a supernatural empowerment of God to fulfill his purpose in the earth. And when he does that, he doesn't do that just without purpose, without intentional gain. You know what I mean? So if he gives us, and, and, and the Bible teaches us that there's reward with that, that if we took the talent or the gift and we did something with it, then there was a reward with that. And yet the one that hid that or just tried to hold it just to give it back to God, God was displeased with that. Right. So this whole concept and this idea about getting a greater understanding of what my gift is and, and, and spiritual inventory, that's, that's going to be really big in our lives. And there's three last things that we have in our words to know. And the first one was ministry, again, that we were just talking about, which is to serve uh, service to others for the purpose of showing the love of God. Uh, I like that definition uh, because that's what true ministry is. It's demonstrating God's love, you know, through through active service, yeah. whatever level it may be. And really, when you come come go about it from that mindset, then nothing's too low for me to do. You know, as the pa as a pastor, as a preacher, as a teacher, as an elder, uh, if something needs to be done, and God has given me the ability, on, the awareness, now. and the the uh, strength to accomplish that, then it's of a great reward for me personally and for the body when I can act in that role. Amen. And that's part of uh, that concept. Even as I was just expressing that. It's kind of why I, I, what I said earlier, because I know when I when opened up, it may have been shocking when I said to, to some people, it may have been shocking when I said when you approach it from the list perspective, you miss something, right? Because it gets to be like what I don't have. Right. You know, honestly, when you start looking at the gifts as outlined in the Bible and you start trying to take an inventory and then, you know, do this a couple of little, can we give me, can we give me a couple of quick questions that I can answer to figure if I fit in this category or not, then really you miss something with that. Because he says that every believer has been given a, the gift of God, right? Yeah. And I say it that way because the gift really or the promise is the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Amen. And when you look at, even when you look at the list, it says, and the manifestation of the Spirit is this. And then it goes through the list. But the gift is him living inside of you. Amen. And he, like Jesus, it, it are equal and cohabitant with God. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And God is the great what? I am. Yes. Amen. In fact, that, and when we even think about that, when we put that in context in our mind, even from our, 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 our human perspective, it, it says that he can be whatever he has to be. Yeah. So, again, so one of the dangers for me for the list is that if, if God has expressed himself to me, in me, in this way in the past, does that mean he can't do something else with me in the, in the future? Right. Does that mean that I can't, that, okay, so like I had the gift of hospitality in 1975. <laughs> Everybody knew that I had it. Right? <laughs> they talked about it. Okay? But now it's 2000 and something. Is it not possible that if I'm continuing to walk and grow yeah, in God, that now three or four more gifts on that list yeah, on. will be showing up in my life? That's good. 
See, so that's why I didn't want to just, uh, the title, when, it, when you approach it, you know, just to somebody just looking at me saying, okay, well, what is my gift? Your gift is the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Right. If you're a believer, and that's the one thing, and, uh, can somebody get Acts 10 and 45 for me? Yeah, I think it's Acts 10, 45. I, I'm soliciting help from the crowd because anybody that knows that this lesson is designed for interaction and I'm an interactive guy and uh, I'm kind of like cramped if I can't. <laughs> yeah, but there's something that uh, when we look at again, in the, it, it was an evidence, it was a testimony in the New Testament churches. Um, Acts 10, 45, I think that's the, where I want to see. You want me to start at 44? Uh, yes, ma'am, please. Acts 10, 44 and 45. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, yeah, yeah. See, he said, was poured out what? Awesome. The the gift mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was evidence of God's transforming power in the life of those who had been lost in sin and now have been translated into the kingdom of God. And, and I start there because... That's a universal fact about any authentic expression of the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay? If you've never been saved, you can't really express the Holy Spirit. Mm, that's good. Okay? Because even when you looked at the author talked about the gifts, he says that, uh, that it, 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 uh, it says, it says, the unmerited favor of God bestowed on converted sinners to fit for God's purpose. Okay? Now, that's not to say that God can't, in a moment, do both things. I'm not saying that. There's no limitation with that. Wow. And, 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 and in, the, in the moment when I come to converting understanding of, the, of God, then the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of me. Okay? That's, that's fact. Right? Another overarching truth. And um, we're looking at these because, again, as we have greater understanding of the truth of what God is doing in my life, then now I can walk in humility when people are applauding me or I can keep my head high when people are turning their back on me right. when I'm yet doing what God told me to do. See, one of the things, uh, 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 a favorite scripture of mine in, in ministry and in, in dealing with gifts, it comes out of 1 Corinthians 4 and 7. And Paul was applying the situation about him and Apollo. And, you know, one was like saying, well, Apollos was more eloquent, right. you know, and, and Paul was like saying, okay, but what does either one of us have that wasn't given to us? Right. And if that was the case, then how should any of us boast? See, so I don't get jealous when my sister is expressing gifts of God that I wish I had. Right. You know, I don't get like pouty or upset. If pastor preaches a message and it comes out clearer than my ramblings, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't. And see, but again, it comes from understanding the giftedness that is mine individually and uniquely. Right. And, and I'm saying that for you to put your name in there. That's right. When I say mine. Yeah. Because see, every believer, every child of God. Everyone that accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you. All right. You receive the gift unless you don't belong to him. Right. Okay. And, and, and see, a natural talent can mask a lot. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's, that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about and that we got, that's going to be getting revealed as we go through this. Because okay, the because we talked the next we talked we stopped on ministry, because see if, if the if the Holy Spirit really isn't working in me, then now the things that I do for God is like I want to get paid for it, or, Come on, God. or I, it's, I feel put out because I got to do it. You know, there's no joy in what I'm doing. 
Right. You know, I mean, if people, again, like I said earlier, if people not applauding or batting you on the back, then yeah. now you really don't even want to go down there no more. Right. You understand? And that's not spiritual giftedness. Right. That's operating in the flesh. Yep. Okay? So then, but, uh, so then he talks about two other ones, and the one he talked about is prophecy. And, and that's a great one. It says, it's an inspired utterance bestowed on an individual to give spiritual guidance and warning. Yeah. And I remember in, in, in back even in scripture, there was a place where uh, uh, Joshua and them were getting upset because there were some that were speaking words in the camp, but they were speaking word for God, but they weren't with Moses in them. And Moses asked him, are you red faced for me? I mean, he said, I wish that all people would speak a word for God. Right. So I wish all of us walked close enough with God that he could use us to say, hey, God says don't do that today. Yeah. Right. You know, to utter a warning in season that would be profitable for all, right? Mm -hmm. So this prophecy, it's, it's good that it's there, and it goes right along with the last one, which is serve, Right? And again, this says empowerment to assist and with others. And I, I want to talk about that again because it talks about it, that empowerment really goes along with, the, I mean, that serve goes along with that grace that was earlier mentioned because it said that it was a divine, um, uh, 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 divine empower, uh, uh, powers, uh, uh, divinely empowers a, a behavior uh, uh, to share God's work with others. And the spirit-empowered service to the church. Spirit-empowered service. And, and, and it's, when you think about how much more effective we will be as we yield ourselves to the spirit empowerment that comes authentically from God. I don't care what program you're doing. You know, if God is the one that's directing it, if God is the one that's energizing it, then great is the rewards that's going to come out of that, you know, in the, in the, in the form of transformed lives, right? So the, the first section that we deal with uh, is talking about cultivating the ground. And for those of you that we know that normally cultivating the ground deals with a set of questions that are set to break us up, right? To really make us uh, think about and, and where are we at with this? Because remember, again, we talked about the Holy Spirit coming to live inside of us, right? And one of his ministries is to lead us into all truth. Okay? Scripture tells you plainly that when he comes, he will lead us into all truth. And one of the first things I realized is that he will show me how I line up and where I line up with where God say I should be. Right. And, and that may cause me to have some cultivating moments. You know, because sometimes your heart gets hardened on some stuff. Uh, sometimes you kind of get to slipping off into some things that really places us or orientates us in a position contrary to what God really where what God wants to do with us, right? So this cultivating the ground part is really, really important. And those of you that really normally are with us know how important it is because it really like prepares our heart for the seed of the word. Okay, so uh, I need one of my sisters to give me that first. Uh, um, the, actually, just read the whole cultivated the ground. I'm going to try to be quiet. God is an outstanding communicator. In this session, let's look at how God can communicate to each one of us the specific spiritual gifts he has appointed for us to use in serving the body of Christ. Nothing occurs without his grace his word, and his Holy Spirit. By grace, God redeems us and endows Christian believers with at least one spiritual gift to further his kingdom. Start right there. Couldn't hold myself. <laughs> no. But it's so important. You said a lot, right? I mean, when you think about it, he says, okay, who gives spiritual gifts? God does. Can anybody manufacture that? No, they cannot. You know, and so then if I got questions about it, should I just grab any kind of self-help book on the subject? No, sir. You really want to operate with something that's anointed. And the most anointed thing that we know of is what? The Word of God. 
the Bible. <laughs> Start right there. It's every all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, right? It's inspired. So I, I, if I want to know, then I want to go with that. But then I like the part where he says that nothing occurs without his grace, his word, and his Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Nothing. See, Jesus said, with, apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. Nothing. But so often when we get into the spiritual realm, because the Holy Spirit is the only spirit operating, yeah. that spirit of flesh and pride and demonic desires are also operating for, for dominion in our hearts every day, right? It's important that we understand that, that the, the yielding to the Holy Spirit and the Lordship of God in our daily walk. And, and, and that's what he was talking about. And so if you go ahead with what you're saying, because he says that, uh, I'm, I stopped yet, he identifies to us. Oh, keep going. He identifies to us what those gifts are in a number of ways. Some explore their possible gifts by, by completing one of the many spiritual gift quizzes or inventories found online. Others fast and pray to God for the answer. Some believers testify that God confirms gifts as believers serve and he see his passion exerted through them. Clearly, God's word and the Holy Spirit identify our gifts to us and give, give us grace to serve with them in whatever way God deems desirable. Right. Mm. Now, here's the big side about that, and here's the downside about that. If God gave it to you, there is no doubt you're going to be able to accomplish it. Right. The downside is, you got no excuse when you get home to tell them why you didn't do it. See? And, and, and so that's why this is an important lesson that we're going through. Because... As we, as God reveals to us, because he, he, that's what he talked about. He says, God is a great communicator, right? Right. Uh, first of all, is there anybody that denies the fact that God can get your attention? Mm -hmm. Okay, he does. Yeah. And, and he knows how to communicate to you on whatever level you are. Okay? I mean, if you think, if you, if you like some people that are completely analytical and everything has to be spelled out for you, then God will analytically get your attention. If you're like others that are visual and see you're analytically getting your tail toe up mm -hmm. and they make the adjustments and, and see God, <laughs> then that's enough. Sorry. No, God knew how to get our attention. Yes, it does. He's a great communicator. Right. Okay? And he empowers us yes, to do it. And, and with that empowerment, Paul learned out or, or figured out that it works better when I can't do it. In my weakness, his strength is perfected. So this power that God has given us, and this is why when some of us, when we get home, are going to have to have a big, I, I, I'm reminded of the old Lucy Ball things when Desi used to say, hey Lucy, you got some splaining to do. Because, <laughs> I mean, some of I'm dating myself, but, but no, if you remember, I love Lucy. Lucy, Ricky used to say, Lucy, with that Hispanic accent, you got some explaining to do. Because if he gave us the power to do it, and yet we do nothing, or try to act like I don't have a gift, or I took the quiz three times and I didn't see anything on it that I really liked. Notice how I said that. I didn't see anything in there that who liked? That I like. Because it's whose gift? God's gift. But the time says it's my gift. Yes. And see, those of us in here are mature, and I thank God for that. Because it's important that we do understand that even though it may be credited like it's my gift in this, really it's not. Mm -hmm. I'm but a steward. Yeah. It's God's gift. It's his power. I'm just operating in that level of, of functionality that he wants to use me in today. And, and that's what he wants us to do. This is part of what he meant. Micah 6 and 8 says, Three things the Lord require, that you love mercy, you do justice, and that you walk humbly before your God. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is part of walking humbly before God. 
to walk in a level of submittedness. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this quickly and try to move on. Because we're talking about spiritual things. And, you know, when we think about being full of the spirit, sometimes we think about the sister shouting and turning over the benches at church. Right? Because she was full of the spirit, right? That ain't what the Bible means. When the Bible says you're full of the Spirit, that means that your every thought, your every desire is to do what God said do. Come on now. That means that your appetite, your Jesus said, told them, he said, my meat is to do the will of the Father. Okay? And he was 100% Spirit man. Right? Yeah. So, it, 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 this, this, this being full of the Spirit, so we talk about the spiritualness, it, it, it really comes with a, a willingness and a, and a committedness and to walk circumspectly so that God can use me in whatever capacity he wants to use me in today. And if we could think about it from that perspective, it blows up what we got. Okay? So uh, now I see verse, and this is really it's going to deal with some things that I was talking about, some overarching principles that, that go with our giftedness. It's, uh, the seed, uh, which those of you that may not know, we, each week we get the seed. And the seed is the word of God. And everything that we're talking about and everything we're trying to learn and develop really comes out of the scripture that's being growing and blowing up in our hearts, right? So the seed, the, the, the seed for this week is 1 Corinthians uh, 2, 12 and 11. And could one of y'all read that? Certainly. 1 Corinthians 12 and 11 says, All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Oh, okay. Now, there's some serious stuff in there, but that whole chapter, uh, when you talk about 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about some things that are common to all. And, and, and that's important. Because we live in an age where people would try to, like, uh, manufacture their own charisma. Think about it. That word charisma... It's where we get the word charismatic, right? In, in English. And, and, and people will try to trick you with charismatic stuff. Right? Yeah. Okay? But we, when we're talking about spiritual gifts, we're talking about any true expression of the Holy Spirit living in your life. There's going to be some common things about it, and those things are discussed in chapter 12 in 1 Corinthians, right? Okay, and one of the things that it talked about is that all that there are a variety of gifts, but only how many guys? A one spirit? One spirit. One spirit. Who gives the gift? Okay, so there's many ways that it's expressed, but it's all fumbling and coming from the expression of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and so in, then it's so in the in the seed verse that you just read. Read it again. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one, just as he determines. So who gives it? God. God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. God the Spirit. Uh -huh. And he gives it as who determines? He determines. He determines. See, so now, again, when I'm really looking at it clear-mindedly, then I can't get upset because I'm not the pastor. Because God didn't tell me to be the pastor. Okay. I can't be upset because I don't seem like somebody else, you know, because God didn't give me that. Mm -hmm. He owns the gifts. He didn't have to give me anything. You know, I didn't merit anything because these are grace gifts, right? Yeah. Okay. So, then, so again, this helps me to walk humi in humility as I'm walking in operation under the Holy Spirit. And that's big. So this seed verse is from from which what a large portion of what we want to get comes from. So the last thing we want to deal with today uh, is we want to look at, and, and not really so much the last thing, but what so much is what we have time for, is with that seed, the next section is called uh, planting the seed, right? And I've been kind of massaging it as we've been going along because I've been studying, like reminding us like, who gives the gift? God does, right? And, and he gives the gifts for his purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, although, and then so like, think about it. God knows everything. He's all-knowing. 
So how arrogant is it for me to say he should have known I could have did better with that than Brother Pastor could have? Right. How arrogant is that? Yeah. When I tell God who knows everything, all my shortcomings, all my strengths, all my weaknesses, not only just today, but till I die. None of it's hidden to him. But if, if I have the haughty attitude to think that I should have somebody else's giftedness, right. mm -hmm. that's really a level of arrogance that we really, the devil don't want us to look at. But as, over this next week, I mean, over this next month, as we're looking at our gifts, and, and we are going to get to the list and all of that, but it's, we have to start at a place of, because when you're talking about things of God, man, you better approach God with the right reverence. That's right. You know, I mean, you really better. You know, we're living in a time where we would try to dumb God down and make it like, you know, he, more accessible, so he would just, we could approach him any kind of way. Mm -hmm. But that's foolishness. You know, and so when we're so as we're coming toward this, and as we're looking at this, and as like I say, we're trying to plant this in, and again with everybody at home, I miss y'all, but we still got to do what we got to do, right? So I'm glad we got people in here today that can at least help me as we're really trying to get this to the place where this thought, it, it, even though it may have been radical from where you were thinking when we started, you know, because. I'm not fooling myself to think that uh, there's a lot of people that think they know way more about this than me and could have taught it way better than I could. You understand? And, 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 and we should all be walk, understand that, right? right. But when we're, if we just approach it from what God is presenting to us, you know, open-heartedly saying, God, look, I, you know, I thought I knew some stuff, but would you just take this moment to just show me something different? Right. Even? Because I don't want to just be stuck in my giftedness from 76. Right. 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 No, I really don't. Because the problems and circumstances today are way more complex than they were in 76. This is so true. And I need the strength and the power of God operating fully in my in, with me. That, so which means I got to get out of the way. <laughs> God's power is not short. That's right. We are. So the day has been kind of dedicated toward getting us in the proper orientation and the right attitude as we approach and as we move forward with this idea about what is my gift. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to read Planting the Seed. And uh, uh, why don't y'all can read, please, now. There's much incorrect information floating around about spiritual gifts. Some people teach that what God says is a spiritual gift. Tongues, for example is actually evidence of salvation. Others say to ask God for the particular gift you want and it's yours. Too many even instruct people to lay their hands on their televisions during broadcast to receive spiritual gifts. Stop right there. Now is this true? Yes, it is. We see this. Yes, Amen. You know, and, and, and there's a whole groups that think that if you don't speak in tongues, you ain't never been saved. Right. And they totally overlooking the, the, the complete just exegesis of that passage of scripture, or you wouldn't be thinking like that. Correct. Okay? Because uh, it's clear. Uh, God is a great communicator. But when we're not open about where we're at, okay, and then there's this whole thing about I can ask God for what, 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 whatever gift I want. Man, dude, this is not McDonald's. <laughs> you cannot have it your way. Oh, that's Burkin. <laughs> Boy, it ain't the dollar bill. You know what you look at it. Yeah. No, it's his gifts. He gives them as he sees please. Amen. That's what he do. Because he knows what's best anyway. Amen. You know? And Okay, I'm sorry. Last paragraph. Our seed verse serves to lead us to address these incorrect statements by providing us with the information on how we get spiritual gifts and which gifts we receive. The Holy Spirit graciously, graciously gives us spiritual gifts and determines which gifts we receive. There is no other way to get spiritual gifts. As the Bible is the final word in faith and practice, what does it say? So 
next week we're going to move forward with our plan with this. But uh, just as we was, as I, we're closing, I'm trying to be posturally correct since people are watching me. But no, I'm just trying to say, as we have looked at this and as we've just even just, because if you, the author really kind of summed it up to where I was going with it anyway. Yeah, I mean, and so it's natural for me. And it's not natural because it's, it's, just, it's, it's really the work of God. Because I, I struggle with that. I, you know, because like when, when there was a period where I really was like trying to figure out my list. You know, what did I have? Mm. You know, and then I noticed that things were changing. Yes, and circumstances changed. And then I really came to understand just how much. See, Paul, one of the prayers that Paul had for the church was that we would understand the depth and great, the, the, the height and length and what we really have in God. And, and, and so often, if I'm not, if I'm just worried about what I don't have, mm. then I don't walk in the giftedness that I do have. And, 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 but in that, see, there's a subtle thing that's going on right here that I, I hope that it's like really like even maybe kind of stirring your appetite right now. Mm. You know, it's kind of like when mom and them is cooking, you can say, I smell something cooking back there. I don't know what it is, but it's kind of smelling good, you know? I hope it kind of gets down to you because, like, see, there is a subtle degree of growth in hearing and understanding what God is doing and saying to you on a day to day. That's right. And, and when you get into that, then the, the expression or the manifestation of the gifts mm -hmm. in your life will be such of such a level that people will know that that wasn't him, that was God. Yeah. And, and the word that you give, the, the insight that you, you yield, uh, it will be so helpful in transforming that, that, that it bears fruit for God. Yeah. And, and, and I want to know, is there anybody that's here, that's listening, that, that wants that in their own life? See, because that's that hunger, that's that desire to, because Paul said, he said, it, desire, it's not wrong to pray for the, the, the other gifts. Yeah. But you know, you got to go through something and get them. Yeah. Yeah. That's something we don't oftentimes think about. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you want to pray for the gift of love, then now you got to deal with some hard head, raggedy people yeah. that's going to test your last nerve just so you can prove that you do love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They ain't gonna just give you the good people to love. <laughs> nah. So whatever gift you want, and I use love because he said that's the greatest gift of all. Yeah. See, if you want something, if you want gifts, you know what I mean? It ain't just about the sign gifts, the upfront wow. gifts, you know, the out in the public eye it's gifts. Nice. No, it's about what's what's the the greatest gift is love. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a self-sacrificing deal. See, so uh, as we move forward, I, I, I just want to pray and I want to thank you for your, your time because I know this time of one you could be asleep or whatever. So if, you, if God moved your heart to be with us, I'm encouraging you, please come back. And, and, and I hope you can get even so excited that you can't wait till the day that they say, we're meeting at the church. So you can really come down and we can all partake of this. But right now we just want to thank God for this moment. Because this is the moment we have. And Heavenly Father, we just bless your name this morning. Yes, we Lord. thank you for your awesomeness. And we thank you that you're not dead and that you're alive. And Lord, that you, even though you don't change, you're still just showing us a little bit more every day. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would give us a sensitive ear to your spirit. Yes, Lord. You've already told us that those that are led by the spirit are your children. God, we want to be more like you every day. So we ask that you would forgive us of the sins that block our relationship. And we pray that you would humbly forgive us for the transgressions that we willfully did. And then, Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us in such a way that we will be so sensitive to your voice that we won't follow another. Lord, gift us so that we can show people you. Not for any accolade for us, but that all the glory will be for you. Yeah. For Lord, we believe you when we when you said that when the good king is in power, 
Everybody's at peace. Yes, Lord. So we want you to be on your throne. We want you to be in complete control of our personal lives, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. We ask you to strengthen us by our, your, our spirit, man, so that we can resist the evil one and that we can walk in the power that you've given us to walk in obedience. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit and thank you for his expression in our personal lives. We bless your name today. And we look with great expectation for what you're going to do in this place. Yes, Bless us, even those that are at home. Have mercy upon us. Continue to be our provider. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we'll gratefully give honor to you for all that you've already done. And we count it done in Jesus' name we pray. Yes, 